All right, the next thing that I want to talk about is this other term that is, that is used in our purchase agreement called time is of the essence. Time is of the essence. This is another word that typically is used incorrectly by a lot of agents. So I always want to make sure we cover this. Time is of the essence has nothing to do with the formation of the contract. It has everything to do with the completion of the contract. Matter of fact, time, of the, time is of the essence simply means, bam, the stop clock is running, all right? It comes from, or it implies, that the contract must be completed within the time frame that we give, and that is the closing date, all right? Do not confuse these two dates. The one is the time in which you have given a party to accept your offer. So you write an offer and you wrote 5 p.m. tomorrow night. That is the acceptance time. Once the contract has been formed, then the time is of the essence says, we will close by 30 days and you put a date on it. That is how we do and what is meant by time is of the essence. Once that time frame has passed, then one party or the other may not be obligated to uphold their end of the bargain, such as completing the sale. If the buyer passes the deadline for which he was supposed to close the next day, the seller may say, you know what, I'm not interested anymore, I'm gonna go another direction. That, the fact it didn't close, doesn't relieve the buyer from potentially still being obligated to some litigation and penalties and fines for not doing his portion. It would be considered a material breach by the buyer and then go back to that section called the breach of contract and you could see that specific performance may be the resulting lawsuit that the seller files, okay? So time is of the essence has everything to do with the completion of the contract and not the formation of the contract, all right? And once one party or the other has failed to do what they are supposed to do, in theory, if the seller can't produce a clear title by the day of closing, then the buyer may not be obligated to buy either. So it works both ways. It is just merely a time frame. Follow me with this, with this uh, asinine example. Suppose we didn't even use this clause in there at all. And you offer, you write an offer to me that says, Raymond, I'll buy your property um, and we're gonna get an, a, a loan to do it. And I say, okay, and I agree. And Three years later, you send me an email going, now you know, we're still under contract and he's probably gonna get this credit thing worked out here in the next 10, 12 months. You see how stupid that sounds? Well, that's exactly what this is supposed to stop from happening so that the seller may not be obligated for six, eight, 10, 12 months while the buyer is trying to perform on his side of the deal. And conversely, the other way. You know, the seller's like, oh, I think I can clear this lien up. Uh, it's only going to take me four or five months. You know, the seller or the buyer may not want to wait that long. So we put this deadline date or a drop dead date, and then we use the legal phrase, time is of the essence. Now, remember, if we start bumping up against that time is of the essence situation where there could be a problem, we put we're going to close April the 10th of 2015 and all of a sudden we find out on April the 8th, hey, my client's out of town, my buyer's out of town and I call you and you go, you know what? My seller is with your buyer. They're out golfing in Hawaii. So we're gonna move this closing from the 10th. We're gonna make it the 14th. That's when they both get back. Now, as you can see, this date is past 
the original timeline. In theory, if nothing happened on the 11th of this date, that contract could go bad and either one of these clients could go up, oh, not closing on the 14th because you were said by the 10th. We can actually change that contract. Remember, we beat this horse to death several times. Both parties can agree and you can change the contract. You literally can do what they call novate, is the legal term for novate, uh, changing. We're going to change the contract and we're going to change it from the 10th to the 20th and give us a couple days extra just in case and both parties sign off on it. Now when we close on that 15th, you can see that we are prior to our new drop dead date and if we wouldn't have moved it, we'd have been post drop dead date. So we do that by sending over an amendment. And we've discussed these a little bit. An amendment changes language that both parties have already agreed on. And you can do that if both parties agree. Now, if one of those guys are golfing and he is not coming back till this date and he calls over and says, hey, I can't make this 10th. I want to move the closing to the 20th. And the seller says, no way, I've already got another buyer interested. If you don't close this by the 10th on the 11th, this contract's going away and I'm going to go under a new contract with a new buyer. So it has to be a mutual consent for both parties to change that. But they do quite often. And you see this novation often and it's very common. Hey, the lender needs a day or two. Can we move the closing two or three days? Yeah, we can do that. Send me an amendment to do it because you need the amendment to change this date because of the clause, time is of the essence. All right, let's keep rolling.